Cyberpunk 2077 is ready to play. After nearly two years, several major patches, hundreds of bug fixes, a next generation console upgrade, and now a companion anime on Netflix which I'm told is pretty good, it's now the perfect time to pick up and play Cyberpunk 2077. But there's still one big problem. A problem CD Projekt Red won't be able to fix anytime soon. No, it's not whatever's going on there. No, it's that Grand Theft Auto V still exists. GTA V existing is a problem for Cyberpunk 2077. Oh wow, I hear you say. What an insightful comparison, you genuine ball bag. Yes, I know that's an incredibly dull observation and a really obvious and uninspired thing for a scroat like me to say, but it really is always in the back of my mind whenever I'm playing Cyberpunk 2077. There's this GTA infected part of my brain that tarts every time it sees something in Cyberpunk that GTA does better. While Cyberpunk is not perfect in its current state, it's a serviceable experience of no small amusement. But even if it were completely glitch free and operating as intended 100% of the time all the way across the board, it still has this problem of Grand Theft Auto V. Now you might be asking if GTA and Cyberpunk are really that comparable. What with GTA V being an action adventure crime sandbox and Cyberpunk 2077 being an open world sci-fi RPG. In which case Cyberpunk's biggest problem would be that Fallout exists and Borderlands, and Deus Ex Human Revolution. But forget about all that. What really matters is that if you're making a game with an explorable city, with motorbikes and cars, and other grand autos you can thieve, pedestrians that talk sass that you can slap and mow down, and a police force that chases you with varying aggression based on your wanted level, and gun shops and radio stations and street races, and satirical advertisements, and prozies and gangs and cab companies and roller coasters, aren't you going to want to make sure you do all those things as well as or better than GTA 5? Especially considering it's nearly 10 years old at this point. Otherwise, what are we doing here? So you might also be asking, is it a problem for Neo that Dark Souls exists? Is it a problem for Rayman that Mario exists? Well, it would be if those titles failed to nail the essential features of their respected genres, features that their big rivals execute perfectly and are celebrated for. If you're putting out your game in the same arena as one of the big boys, surely you'll want certain standards to be met basic ground level shit that needs to be present and correct. For example, if in Grand Theft Auto you can change the radio station with a single button press, why then would you make it so in your game you have to hold down a button to get to a menu and then manually select your desired station from there? If Grand Theft Auto had a dynamic minimap that zoomed out when the player travelled at high speeds, wouldn't you want to make sure your game emulated that so your players didn't miss corners and get frustrated? If Grand Theft Auto had authentic dialogue because it was well researched and featured actors with similar backgrounds to the characters they're portraying, wouldn't you then want to send your actors into the year 2077 to find out how people really talk in the future, Chumba? Okay, so that, that's a bad example, but you catch my dick. So a lot of that smaller quality of life UI stuff has since been patched into the game, but my point is it should have been there in the first place. I mean, come on Cyberpunk, you're supposed to be the next big thing, you're going toe to toe with GTA, and you've got your shoes untied, and your shirt is poking through your fly, and your bum's out, and you're on fire. So anyway, I often think about a thing director Brad Bird said in an interview this one time, in Empire magazine I think it was. So in 2003, Pixar was kicking off big style, coming off the back of five consecutive box office hits with critical acclaim up the wazoo. The most recent of hits being Finding Nemo, their most successful blockbuster yet, and it now fell to outsider Brad Bird to deliver the next one. No pressure. So in preparing to write and direct The Incredibles, Brad Bird had this to say, or something like this, I can't remember the quote exactly, and I can't find the original article, but anyway, he said something like, we need to do Nemo or better or we're fucked. That's an Oscar winning attitude right there. Because when expectations are so high, there can't be any room for complacency. Did CD Projekt Red have a similar mindset when they set out to work on Cyberpunk 2077? Absolutely, I bet they did. I think they had so much ambition and vision and new ideas. They certainly promised as much. And I can't know for sure, but maybe there was some overconfidence in their camp after their success with the Witcher series. And maybe they said to themselves, well, we got horses working perfectly, so cars and bikes should be a breeze. I mean, this is just speculation. I can't know for sure. Maybe they had it under control. They just ran out of time and COVID screwed them up. But I wouldn't disbelieve it if someone told me they just completely underestimated the task. It does happen. 
Even Nintendo got themselves in a bit of a pickle after the release of the Wii U, when they struggled to get titles out the door, having underestimated the resource required to develop games in HD. People underestimate stuff all the time. You underestimate Chuck Norris and you might find yourself destroyed. Think about it. Hey, how's it going? CD Projekt Red is now drawing plans for the future, with the announcement of Orion, the codename of the next cyberpunk game, at a shiny new American studio, and a plan to fully unleash the potential of the cyberpunk universe. Sounds good. I was, however, slightly amused by their statement regarding the hiring of new developers. Quote, As for the total headcount required for such a production, I believe the best reference is Cyberpunk 2077, our most recent release and a good reference point when thinking about development headcount and future projects of this scale. I think it's safe to assume that between 350 and 500 developers should be required. Is that a good reference point? Because remember, the development of Cyberpunk 2077 was a disaster. Meanwhile, Rockstar's development on Grand Theft Auto 6 is coming on so strong it can hardly be contained, leaking out all over the place. So while CD Projekt Red are still getting their ducks in a row, Rockstar have been honing Grand Theft Auto for 25 years now. And this is why GTA existing is a big problem for Cyberpunk and CD Projekt Red. Because you can't lead the pack by going slower. And CD Projekt Red could be playing catch up for a long time to come. Because when it comes to open world cities, planes, trains and automobiles, pedestrians, cops, stunt jumps, hidden packages, jetpacks, Rockstar figured all that stuff out a long time ago. So now they can innovate, progress and hopefully push GTA to new horizons. What Cyberpunk needs to do is all of those aforementioned things as good as or better than GTA. And if they can't, they need to add value where GTA can't. Like for example, one day you might say, the way the cars handle in GTA is the best, but the cars in Cyberpunk look better and they can fly and shoot frickin' lasers. Add value like that sort of thing. So what am I saying then? Until such a time I'll never enjoy Cyberpunk or Saints Row or Watch Dogs or Sleeping Dogs or Lego City Undercover or any other such game all the while GTA 5 exists. Yeah, kinda. Well, actually, no, to be fair. It's just that there's just too many games and I haven't got enough time to play them all. Just sort of like for the same reason why I wouldn't watch a shark's tale, because for the entire duration, I'd just be wishing I was watching Finding Nemo. How else is the industry going to move on if all the new releases are worse than the ones that came before? I suppose you could just say Cyberpunk 2077 is good enough in its own right, but is that enough when GTA exists? Eh.